suck. I know. Depends on the lumbar. The, the anger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or the lumbar. Yeah, there you go. And it's got my phone and stuff, and I just see that. You want to go see? Casper, come on. I'm going to catch baby. I know. I'm tired it is. Huh? It's okay. See, so scary now. Um, we got a phone call from the owner, and uh, actually, we got a phone call from Rebecca Gwynn stating that this dog needed to be seen and treated um, and we referred him to a 24-hour facility because he was in such uh, poor condition so he stayed in the 24-hour facility probably for a couple weeks before he came back here to have wing care done gotcha. and to the best of your knowledge or experience what were some of the conditions you mentioned his uh, uh, physical condition from the attack uh, can you tell us what that, how that, how that manifested as far as his, his wounds? So he has, he has an open wound on his neck um, that has since been closed. He's got a big open wound on his back here that is uh, being treated, and he lost his tail in the attack. Oh, wow. So. So it was hairy for him no, uh -huh. uh, for a bit. He disappeared for a couple of days, so, wow. before they found him, so. He's lucky to be alive. I mean, he really is. He was in bad, bad condition. And you mentioned we talked off camera that he's uh, right now he's only he's less than two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, for a dog his size, how often have you encountered uh, or had experiences with you know attacks of this kind or, or to that sever this severity? Never. <laughs> Never. Especially the severity. Gotcha. So. Oh, and for the, just for the record, like, what was the attack, uh, what was the animal that, that attacked him? So he was, um, he was guarding sheep the night that um, he was attacked, and he went into the, uh, I think there were 11 coyotes, and he went into the pack to attack them to get them away from the sheep. Um, and I believe he killed eight of them. He's a he's a hero for sure. And so, how often do you guys experience? Even, well, I'm, I'm you know I'm sure it changes depending on where you're at geographically in the city. But what? How often do you come across attacks of that kind? Maybe not to that extent, but just the you know coyote versus you know domestic dog attacks that can. That um, you know sometimes it's hard to tell because we do see a lot of trauma, and we're not sure what they're attacked by, but we know they're attacked. Uh, and likely it could be a, um, a fox or a coyote or a raccoon or whatever, um, another dog, another cat. Wow. And uh, so, for, uh, Katrina, what's his aftercare been like as far as your experience with him? Um, when it when it first when he first came in, it was um, a huge um, wound um, on his back, especially um, that we've been um, treating by second intention healing, which means we're not going to close it. Um, we're gonna just let it do its, do its healing from the inside out. Um, so we've been putting a Manuka honey salve on it um, and what we call a, a tie down bandage, which means we put like a lap sponge on top and then we use umbilical tape um, to tie it down um, using some stay sutures that are just around the output, outside perimeter um, of, the incision, of the wound itself. So we changed that. Um, we started out changing it every day for the first few weeks. Um, and now we've gone down to we change it every two or three days, depending on what it looks like at the time of change. Um, the neck wound um, was recently closed because um, it got close enough to now to close. Um, and so we've been putting the Manuka honey on it as well and cleaning it up real well. We have to fully bandage it because he shakes off any tie down bandages we have. Um, I wonder if it tickles a little bit. Thank you. If it tickles a little bit um, when, when he has it on his neck. So he will shake until it comes off. So we put a bandage on, ironically, with sheep this time. <laughs> and Katrina, you can start with the question, but I would like to hear uh, Dr. Brosman's answer as well. Uh, what's his uh, disposition uh, been like since you've had experience with him? His disposition, um, he's, a, he's a character. Um, he's a goofy guy, but he does his own thing. Typical working dog um, to where they're just kind of an independent working dog. Um, so we let him walk out around with us in the morning before the shift starts. Um, 
And when it's time to change the bandage, we almost have to chase him down because he knows it's happening. Um, but um, he's definitely always been in good spirits, and we don't even have to fully sedate him to change his bandages. It's almost like he knows we're trying to help him. So, yeah, so he's a good guy. Excellent. And Dr. Ross? He's spoiled. <laughs> spoiled rotten. Um, I'm hoping he'll be able to go back to a guardian dog, but I don't know if we're going to uh, ruin that for him mm -hmm. since he's gotten really attached to us. Um, he loves uh, Macy, one of the um, technicians. <laughs> he's been trying to get over there to us. <laughs> he says, I'm going to lay down. You can look into Rosanto. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, but you can look at him when you answer. Um, so as far as the cases that you've seen here um, at Lifeline and the cases that you've dealt with, an attack of this sort and to see that this animal is doing so well now, how would you characterize that? I mean, it's kind of a miracle, really. I mean, it is. He shouldn't have survived. It is a miracle, and it makes you feel really good to be part of it. So um, that is, you know, one of the things that keeps us going every day is to have cases like this and uh, seeing how not only the owners appreciate it, but the animals appreciate it as well, and they love us. So. Yeah, and um, the fact that when they found him, he was covered in maggots, and because he had hidden into like a chicken coop, I think he said, um, and popped up um, a couple of days after the incident even happened, um, a lot of things could have happened. He could have become septic, a massive infection, um, but we were able to um, piggyback with our with some partners. We were able to like come in and, and clean him up good enough that he can uh, make a, a good clean bill of bill of health. Excellent. And so, what that was that time frame been like since the time you guys discovered it till today, Thursday, the first? So we're we're like about a month in, um, at least. I feel like like the first of November, kind of or end of October. I don't know when it happened, so we're a month in. Excellent. And what would you say his uh, diagnosis is, uh, in your opinion, Dr. Bob? Or his prognosis? Prognosis, sorry. Yes. Um, I think his prognosis is good for full recovery. And do either of you guys have experience with this type of breed before breeds like this, as far as the guardian and sheep dog types? I mean, I've worked on them before, but I. Not like this. <laughs> certainly, I've never seen one that's killed multiple coyotes. <laughs> right. And he's gentle. He's like a big, gentle giant. Yes. Okay, that's the thing that I'm seeing here is his mood seems very calm and very at ease with, you know, like you said, like very visible points of trauma. And like it's, if it was a person, we had a lot of reasons to be what was me, but he seems mm -hmm. very. Yeah. I think like the day after he came in, um, when I saw him in her cage and I was like, oh, we have this huge dog in here. And his wound was covered up, but that was a, we were doing bandage changes every day. And then I saw it and I was like, ooh, that's, I've never seen. I mean, cause it was, it was probably about a foot long and maybe eight to six inches uh, in width. So it was a big flesh wound, like it was gone, skin's gone. <laughs> and that was just that you guys would just get across just from the attack or just from the like? That was from the attack, just yeah. Just missing like it had been It looked like, off. yeah, it looked like maybe a coyote grabbed a hold of his skin and just peeled it right off. Um, so seeing that, I was like, oh gosh. And then I saw his neck wound and it was the same thing, flesh taken off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, what are we going to do? But, but that Manuka honey really, really works for skin, like the granula granulation and everything for it. it he looks great now. Excellent. He's in good spirit.